What's up guys, my name is Coach Jeremy. This is the CCM Welcome to Hockey series. Uh, you might be wondering why we're in the living room. We don't play hockey in the living room, but if it's your first time on the ice, it's a good idea to go through your equipment and make sure you have everything. And if you're a little guy like Mason down here, uh, it's a good idea just to make sure that everything fits properly before he gets on the ice. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna go through the equipment, uh, how to put it on, and then you'll be ready for when you get on the ice. Mason, what's inside? My hockey thing. Yeah, your hockey thing. So over the summer, we've been collecting the gear that Mason needs. Thanks to CCM for sending us a bunch of this stuff. Uh, we're going to pull it all out, and then we're going to try it on and make sure that it all fits properly. Uh, this is a little hockey rink. That's, that's for a later video. All right, let's just dump it out. You want to do that? Yeah. Let's dump it out. First, we're going to put on the jock. It's nice if the kids have a bit of a base layer or protection layer. Basically, that would just be like some long pants and a shirt that goes underneath their equipment. That just keeps them from sweating into the equipment and it makes it a little easier to clean so the equipment doesn't get as stinky. Uh, that's a little bit more for the older people. Cat jumping in the box over there. That's especially true for the older players. The more you sweat, the more you can sweat into your gear. So it's just nice to have that layer of separation so you can wash the base layer and you don't have to wash your hockey equipment as much. So you ready to put this stuff on? Yeah. All right. First up is the jock. This one's pretty simple. The ones that I like the best are the compression shorts. There are different styles of jocks you can get. These ones are nice because they have the Velcro right here, and that's going to attach the uh, hockey socks right to that. Makes it really easy to put on. So this is the style I recommend. There you go, buddy. Does it work? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the kids might like to test the jock. All right. What goes on next, Mason? Next. Uh no, we got to put your shin pads on next. With the shin pads, are pretty simple to put on. A lot of them have the Velcro system. There is a left and a right, so make sure you get those on the right leg. So we'll put the left one on first. And how to put those on, you should put them in place, grab this Velcro, and then pull it around. And there should be another one there. And if you don't have Velcro, that's fine. You can just uh, put them in place, then pull the hockey socks on, and then put clear tape around to hold them in place. Looking good, buddy. Now what we need? Daddy, where are my hockey socks? Daddy, where are my hockey socks? Oh, your hockey socks. So I actually didn't buy socks for Mason and I didn't buy him a jersey either because when you sign up for the league, sometimes they'll give you the socks and your jersey. So you can save a little bit of money if you know that you're getting the socks ahead of time. But for the sake of the video, I grabbed an old pair of my socks. We'll use those. I just noticed that Mason also doesn't have actual socks on, so those are important to put on because it's gonna give them more comfort, especially their first time going on the ice. Uh, they can tend to complain about their feet or getting blisters, so make sure they have uh, socks that are put on properly, no wrinkles, uh, so reduce the chance of getting blisters. So all you do is slide it over. You're gonna pull the Velcro down and then attach right there, and there could be Velcro at the back as well. Let's see, Mason. Yep, these ones have the Velcro at the back as well. So you just pull it down and attach. Next up, Mason, get your hockey pants on. There we go. You stand up. Oh yeah, look at you. With hockey pants, there's two or three, if you want to be really particular, ways to fasten them. So you've got the lace right there and you can just do a simple uh, bow like you tie shoelaces. That usually does the trick. If you want a little tighter, you can do a double knot. And then right here, that's sort of the final way to get them nice and snug around. Just pull that little buckle. And the third way, if you want to be particular. Ow, you're pinching. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me loosen that up a little. To loosen it, you just push right there and pull a little bit. If you want to do the third way, there's also suspenders that you can clip onto there. But not a lot of people really use that method anyway. Next, Mason, we can put on your skates. All right, how about you sit right here and we'll get your skates on. Aren't these adorable? They're just the cutest things. Now something to remember is you can't just take the skates right into the box and then go on the ice. They have to be sharpened. These ones have not been sharpened yet. So it's a good reason we're getting dressed ahead of time because that reminded me that I got to take them to the shop and get them sharpened. Now remember, this is the Welcome to Hockey series. So you don't have to get all this gear to get on the ice for your first time. For your first time, it's okay just to get a pair of skates, a helmet, probably some elbow pads would be nice too in case you fall. So for the little guys and girls out there, you don't have to start with hockey skates. In fact, if they're little, like two years old, they probably won't even fit into a pair of skates like this. You can get something like this. It's a beginner skate. It has two blades, so it's really easy to stand on. And it's something just to get them out there on the ice. All it does is have straps that straps to their boots or their shoes. 
So no matter what shoe size they are, they can get out on the ice with you. And that's a good way to start. From there, once their feet grow a little bit, you can get a proper size skate for their feet. Hockey skates can be a challenge to put on if they're undone all the way. So what you can do is pre-lace them so that it's easier just to slide on the feet. All you do is leave them loose. So usually you're gonna do every lace ahead of time except for the top eyelet. So then you can pull that back. You see there's still lots of room to get the foot in there. Let's go Mason, slide your foot in. And then all you have to do is the top eyelets. When you're tightening the skates, if you pull them really tight like that, you'll probably get some soreness or some complaints from whoever uh, skates you tied that they're too tight. So you want them snug, but not so they're cutting off the circulation to the feet. Now we're getting to the last eyelet. All we gotta do is pull this back and slide it in there. And same with this one. What I like to do when I'm tying skates is instead of doing it how I normally do it where I tie my shoes, where it's just once around like that, I go one more time around. What that does is when you pull it tight, it stays. So it makes it a little easier and then you can pull one more time, make it a little bit more snug. If you pull them too tight, it can cause some pain and then also restrict movement. But if they're too loose, then it can cause the uh, skates to kind of slip or especially if the skates are too big. So that's something to watch out for. You wanna make sure the skates fit properly and are tied snug, but not too tight, not too loose. So that looks pretty good. Let's go Mason, stand up. Whoa, Mason, looking good, buddy. But we're not done yet. What else do we have to put on now? Gloves. Oh, we need gloves, we need elbow pads, we need shoulder pads. You wanna smell the other one? <laughs> okay, he's a hockey player because <laughs> these are pretty bad. Um, well, it makes me proud. That's a proud dad moment right there. So next up is the elbow pads. I grabbed mine just because they're a little easier to see the difference. They can be confusing because there's a left and there's a right and there's a top and a bottom. So there's a few ways you can put them on wrong. So I'm gonna help you by showing you how to know if they're right or left. The protection that you get in your elbow pad is the bicep, which is the smaller part, a little softer, and then your elbow and your forearm, which is the harder part right here. So there's an elbow right there, and that's where your elbow sits. There's also the slash guard, which is usually on the outside. So you can see mine is right there. I have mine done up, that's how I like to keep them. I don't undo them and do them up every single time. I basically will just slide these right on like that. You can see here we've got the slash guards on the outside, we have the bicep protection right there, and then the elbow sits right there. So we can grab Mason's elbow pads. As you can see, it's a little harder to tell, but there's the bicep protection right there. So that's gonna go to the back. Now we just need to know the left and the right, and we're gonna look for the slash guard, which is right there and there. So this would be the left one, this would be the right one. And let's double check, because usually they say somewhere which one is which. Ah, right there. Left and right here, it says right. So there we go. Let's put these on, Mason. My first game back, sometimes I want to take a nap halfway through putting my equipment on too. It's, it can get tiring. Oh, let's go, buddy. So for the shoulder pads, there's Velcro that will attach right here for the upper arm. And all you do is bring it around Velcro. There's gonna be Velcro for the chest, so it comes from the back to the front. There's another one on this side. It goes from the back to the front. And then we have the last strap for the upper arm. Next up is the neck guard. This is really important. If the ref sees that a player isn't wearing a neck guard, they can throw them out of the game. So always remember the neck guard. With the younger children, what you're gonna notice is that they will complain the most about the neck guards because a lot of them are pretty thick and kind of rigid. So they're almost like a collar around. I got this one, it's a little bit thinner, so it won't cause much discomfort. Comfortable. What? Comfortable. Comfortable? Yeah, comfortable. There you go. Next up is the jersey. And if you wanna get some really cute matching pictures with your kid, you should get matching jerseys. Mason, you wanna put your jersey on? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, it can be a bit of a uh, disaster trying to put a jersey on because you gotta find the right spot, pull it over the elbow pads, the shoulder pads, all that stuff. A lot of kids struggle with this, so just gotta kinda shake shimmy and you will eventually get that on. Stand up, buddy. <laughs> How do you feel now? 
And the next piece of equipment, there's a lot of equipment, isn't there, is the mouth guard. There's different styles of mouth guards you can get. So this one's more of a rubbery feeling one. You're gonna boil it, wait for it to cool just a little bit. When it's still kind of malleable, then they're gonna bite into it and it's gonna form to their teeth. And then you're gonna use this tether, tether it to the helmet. Uh, there's also this style from CCM. So this is a more innovative one. I think it goes on the top of the mouth and it has all these little holes in it. So it's a lot easier to talk when you have the mouth guard in and it doesn't bother them as much. Some go on the bottom teeth, some go on the top teeth. How's the like, batteries on my camera? Oh, my battery's good, but uh, Mason's battery is dead. Uh-oh. I gotta recharge your batteries? All right, robot. <laughs> All charged up. <laughs> Robot's alive again. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Oh, my batteries are charged. What do we have to do now? Uh, helmet and gloves, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's <laughs> Get it on. Oh no! What's there? Oh, we have to take it out of the box first. The helmet really important that you get the right fit. You don't want it too big wobbling around, and if it's too tight, then it's going to cause a lot of pain. So we're going to put this on, and I can see this one right now is too big. But helmets can be adjusted, so we'll adjust this and see if we can get the right fit for them. Some helmets you need to use tools like a screwdriver to adjust, but other ones, usually the, the higher end ones, will have toolless adjustment. This one does, really convenient, especially as a child grows. You just slide that up and adjust it, or if they have discomfort on the ice, really easy to adjust. So this one was already at the fullest, which is a good sign. So I'm gonna push that in, make it a little tighter. That should hit fit Mason's head. Just push that down, you're good to go. Let's try again. Ding, ding. Oh, like this? With helmets, there's three straps. So there's one for this side, one for this side, and they just pull to the end right there, and you can adjust. This one is really easy to adjust, which I like. It's Velcro. Just pull like that and make sure it's uh, snug, not too tight. And the last one is a chin strap. Just comes over here and clips in. All right, stand up, Mason. For checking the helmet, you can just move it around. If you see space up here and it's wiggling around a lot, then you have to adjust it or perhaps get another helmet. Uh, the Chin cup right there should be sitting almost on the chin. This one isn't, so we can adjust for that later when he's in a better mood. Mason, I'm gonna say this for you. You can put on your own hockey gloves, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, you put these on. I'm gonna get your hockey stick. Show me how you do it, eh? Hockey stick, which one do you want? We got a composite or wood? Cut, wood. You want the wood one, all right, mm -hmm. good choice. So when you're picking a stick for the little ones or if it's your first time playing hockey, it doesn't really matter which type you get as long as it's the right handedness. So this is a lefty because Mason's dominant hand is his right hand. So he's gonna shoot left. And just from how he was picking up the stick when we were playing, um, he felt he was always going for the left-handed shot. So that's why we got a left-handed stick. Um, as you get better, as you get more experience, then you can go with a more expensive stick. But especially for the little ones, they're pretty much just gonna be learning to skate, falling over, getting back up. So they don't need a really expensive stick when they start because they're gonna grow out of that. Save the money for a little bit later and then you can treat them with a sweet stick like this. We're gonna put this one away for you, okay, bye. Mason, I think there's one more piece of equipment we forgot. Why? What, what is it? Let's see. There's, there's something in this box. I just, I, it's uh, it's Max. <laughs> <laughs> this is our cat, Max. <laughs> he likes to get into everything. So Mason. Do you think Max is going to be a hockey player? We call him Max Dangles? Ah! All right, let's put him back in there. Get in the box. Get in the box. <laughs> um, you don't need a cat to play hockey. Uh, in fact, sometimes they get into your hockey equipment, so make sure you keep that bag zipped up if there's kitties around. That should be it for the hockey equipment, but remember, like I said in the earlier video, oh, <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, we got to get this guy off to preschool. He's ready to go. Um, but yeah, like I said in the other video, you can start with less than that. This is just to play organized hockey. So uh, good luck out there on the ice. Big thanks to CCM for sending me most of this stuff for Mason. Uh, we're gonna have a blast and I will be sharing some more videos out there on the ice. Also, there's a lot more videos in this series that will help you learn how to play hockey without getting on the ice because I know it can be so expensive. So I'll show you how to stick handle at home. I'll show you how to practice your shooting at home. I'll show you easy ways to work on your skating and different maneuvers. So those will be in the next videos coming up after this one. Thanks a lot for watching the video. We'll see you in the next one. Let's go, Mason. Where are we going? We gotta go to school. We're late. Daddy, come, mommy, come here. Come on.